front. Welcome. If you're new to this channel, let me introduce myself. My name is Logan. This is Timeless Personal Growth and Development. And today we're continuing the Rational Male Preventive Medicine book review. This will be part two. So if you haven't seen part one, Rational Male Preventive Medicine, or The Rational Male, the very first book, you can go back into my playlist on book reviews and you can find it right there. It's not exactly what we're talking about. So the Rational Male book series is a book series on dating, relationships, and intersexual dynamics, how men and women interact with each other in our world today. And the author of The Rational Male, Rolo Tomasi, goes into, well, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in through a few points with you guys. Instead of reviewing the entire book, I'm going to go through a few principles and concepts that he goes in into the book. So the concept we're going to be talking about is the burden of performance. So in the Rational Mail, Rolo Tomasi speaks about how men have the burden of performance, that men need to perform. And I've I mentioned this in like many videos, my attraction tips for men videos, book reviews, I said this before, is that men need to perform. And I didn't understand this concept of when I was younger. I was just, to me, I was under the illusion like, well, you just find a girl and she'll just love you for who you are. No, you, you, you need to perform as a man. You need to be... You need to be competent and confident in being able to do stuff. That's just generating income, having skills, having competency skills. You need to be able to perform and do stuff. I, in my attraction to videos I talk about all the time is that you got to be able to provide something. You can't just be a fat slob sitting, sitting on the couch and hoping like, oh, she's going to love me for who I am because I'm such an amazing guy and I treat her great. That's all fine and dandy, but none of that all none of that crap matters if you can't perform, if you can't do anything, you can't provide anything. It doesn't matter. And it's just it's not gonna it's not gonna be relevant it's not gonna be relevant to it, it's not gonna be significant to a woman if you can't perform. And all those little other things are oh you treat her great, you're nice, you're a nice guy, you're friendly invested, all that stuff is great. But if you don't have the foundation of performance as a man, if you don't know how to perform and do stuff and have skills, none of that matters. That's the foundation you need to have is the burden of performance. And for men and women, it's different. For men, men have a higher standard of performance than women do. Let's say women can't perform. They can get away with not having to, which could be a problem. I think men today need to set a higher standard for themselves in being able to hold females accountable for a higher performance of what they bring to a relationship and hold yourself accountable and have your own standards. But you gotta be able to perform. Point two, mental point of origin. Again, I came out, I came across all these concepts before like, what the hell is mental point of origin? And mental point of origin is essentially when you're faced with a decision that you have to make, the first person that you think about and how that decision is going to affect you in your life, the first person you think about is not your friends, not your wife, not your kids, not your parents, not your friends, not your coworkers. The first person you think about is you. So if you're someone, you're engaged, like for example, let's say you're engaged and you're getting married and you're trying to decide if you should get married or not and you're like, well, I have this big decision, I got to get married. And if your thought process is only thinking about how she feels about the marriage, only how she feels about things, how she feels this is a necessary step for your relationship, if that's all you're focused on is how she thinks and how she feels about it, you don't have mental point of origin because you're only thinking about her and how this life decision is going to affect her and putting her first. You matter too. 
So whenever you're faced with a really tough decision in your life, how does it affect me first? Is this something that I want to do? Great, if it's something that I want to do, we'll move forward, move forward with this decision. And I'm happy about it, so the people in my life, my social circle, my inner circle, people in my perimeter will be happy with that decision too. But my whole point of origin is always thinking, how does this affect me first? It sounds almost selfish to an extent, but it's not sacrificing your own, not sacrificing what you want for someone else. Because if you're sacrificing what you want for someone else just to make that person happy or you feel that's something you were thought you were supposed to do, it's like, well, put her first, you know, I've got to put this person first in my life. Because that's what I've been told to do, is always put others first before me. That's the right thing to do. And if you live your life by that code, by that principle, always putting yourself first, you're going to see over time how you will slowly, slowly, slowly start to deteriorate, mentally and emotionally deteriorate. Why? Because you're so focused on making other people happy and not focused on you. I'll give you an example. A few years ago, of five, six years ago, I was in a relationship. And I, I did not have mental point of origin because I was always focused on like, what's best for her? What does she want? Always doing what, always doing what she wants me to do. Always got to make sure, got to you know, get stuff for her birthday, always putting her first. I, as soon as I'd be finished work, I'd be like, what can I do for her? And always putting her first and never focusing on me. And what did that do? Did, I, did that create a good dynamic? Did she feel drawn to me? Did she feel attracted to me? Did she appreciate all the sacrifice I was making? Hell, hell no, she didn't. No, no, she did not. She, at event, maybe at first, like, oh, that's cute, that's sweet. Eventually, she resented it. Resented all of that. Because it makes a man attractive is what he's doing for himself. Not being a selfish dick, that's not what I'm trying to say, but he's focused on building himself. He's focused on making decisions that affect him and putting him in a state of mind where he's his brain's focus on making decisions to drive himself in the direction that he wants to go in his life. Despite what anybody else feels about it, when he, comes to, when he comes up to a decision that he has to make, great, how does, does that decision affect me? If that's your first reflex, that's mental point of origin. And going back to that story I told you, yeah, after that relationship ended and I realized all those sacrifices didn't work and didn't pay off, it didn't do anything for me. What was my mentality? What was my shift in thinking? Well, I was frustrated, I was angry, I was resentful. So, my shift in thinking was what? Screw that. Screw her. I'm doing what's right for me now. Pushing people out. People that I don't want around me, I'm pushing. Want, people I don't want in my inner circle, I'm pushing them out. I'm doing what's right for me. Despite what other people have to say about it, I'm doing what's right for me. And what did that do? Improve my life. Improve my life greatly. And doing what's right with me built myself up. And then what's the byproduct of that building yourself up and doing what's right for you? Making yourself feel good. The byproduct of all that is women are drawn to you. Women are drawn to you. That's what happens. And that was the after effect of, in my mind at that time, getting screwed over in that relationship. My mindset at that time was, ah, screw it. I'm done. I'm putting me first. I'm doing what's right for me. If someone wants to come along for the ride with me, that's great. That's wonderful. If they compliment my life and add value to my life, Great, wonderful, and I'll add value to their life. But I'm not sacrificing anything for any, for anybody. And that's it. And it worked out. 
mental point of origin. And since that day forward, any decision I had to make, I always thought about how does it affect me. After, effect, after I've assessed that, then I can go in how does it affect other people in my life. Point three, maximizing male potential. In, in your 30s to become an optimal hypergamous choice. So we talked about hypergamy in the past video. So what's hypergamy? It's a, it's a woman's innate mating strategy that she uses to attach herself with the highest male that she can attract. So as a man, you want to maximize full potential. Men don't maximize full potential until their 30s. Until at least their 30s. So men who settle into a long-term relationship in their 20s, your, your life hasn't even begun in your early 20s. You're so young, you're so na young, you're naive, you don't even know how the world works and settling into a relationship at that time. Once you hit your pit, your stride and hit your peak potential and hit your prime in your 30s, that's when you become the most valuable to women. And that's when you can be the most selective with the woman that you want to settle down with and be with. But if someone that's settled only in your 20s and then you end up spending the next 20 years together, you'll never know how actually the potential you could have had in your 30s because you settled so young. So you got to maximize potential in your 30s. I'm a much, much more fulfilled, happier person at 34 than I was when I was 24. Why? Because I maximized potential. Maximized potential in here, here, and here. And just in, in life. Maximize potential. I didn't have the right mindset to be able to do the things I wanted to do back in my 20s. Or be able to draw women in your 20s. You don't have that ability because you don't have the right thought, thought process. You don't have it in here. It goes right back to mental point of origin because in your 20s, all you're concerned with, all you're concerned with is, well, making other people happy, doing what's best for other people, and neglecting you, always putting other people first. Once you re have a traumatic experience in a relationship and you're just, you throw in the towel like, nah, screw it, I'm doing what's right for me. That's it. I'm going to do what's best for me and maximize my potential and build myself up. That's what I did in my 30s. That's what I did. Maximize your full potential. Maximize your potential, you won't even... Because in your 20s and then you settle into a relationship, a huge, huge amount of your attention is going to be, have to be put on that relationship. When you don't have that relationship in your 20s, all your focus and attention in your mid-20s, your late 20s, early 30s, can be focused on you and focus on developing yourself. And that's when you find, find your true potential, is at those ages. But when you're in your 20s and you get into a rela relationship, you're, you're not going to know because a certain amount of your energy is going to be devoted to that relationship. And it's all part of balance, too. No, for me, I wasn't able, I, I, I could not balance relationship and work. My purpose and my mission and relationship, I couldn't balance it. I didn't know, I didn't have it in here to be able to balance it. I didn't know the proper balance. It's always, well, give all my attention to her. Okay, then what happens? My mission, my purpose and work, falls. That's what happens. When you're, when you're 30s and you have experience and you know how to effectively, in a healthy way, balance relationship and work and be able to bring the proper and correct woman into your life that complements your life and she values you and you value her, then we're on the right track. Like we said, burden of performance, mental point of origin, and maximizing 
your male potential. All things that were completely foreign to me when I was young. It's hard, hard lessons that I had to learn. But if you want to learn this stuff, or if you had had a traumatic relationship or marriage experience, or you're in one now and you're frustrated and you you're frustrated and you're not sure what to do, what direction to go. Like, oh, well, I'm giving her everything she needs, everything she asked for, and well, it's, I'm not, I'm not getting what I want in a relationship, and I don't understand why. Or all of a, or all of a sudden, she wouldn't, this girl didn't want anything to do with me in my 20s. All of a sudden, I'm in my 30s, and she's all over me now. I, I don't understand. I'm still the same guy. Well, all those questions will be answered in the rational mail preventing medicine check it out it was a fantastic read and on that note thank you so much for watching guys if you like this video you can like comment subscribe follow me on twitter linkedin instagram logan Ryder, timeless personal growth and development and i will be doing this so, so much there's so much content in in these books there's so much of them and i'll be doing a part three on this as well and I'll be going into more we're talking about equality and how that can be quality amongst men and women in a relationship and how that can be a very sensitive topic with a lot of people these days I'll be going into the nuts and bolts of it it'll be part three next week and I will see you all in another life have a good night